give the heading compounds of chromium compounds of chromium now the first compound which we will be discussing here the preparation and properties of potassium dichromate potassium dichromate potassium dichromate k2cr 207 we are already familiar with this compound because we have used in many places as a oxidizing agent right preparation of potassium dichromate this questions used to be asked in board exam okay it is prepared from it is prepared from it is prepared from chromate it is prepared from chromate ore okay which is obtained by which is obtained by which is obtained by fusion of which is obtained by fusion of <coughs> chromate or actual the formula is fecr2o4 with sodium carbonate with sodium carbonate with sodium carbonate right in excess of here in excess of air it is it is a orange color it is an orange color it is an orange colored solid orange color solid see actually uh, the compound which we are talking about here if you write the actual formula it is mix oxide if feo dot cr203 okay which we call it as chromate or fecro4 uh, sorry fecr2o4 this is your chromate ore c h r o m i t chromate ore when this we fuse with na2co3 in presence of excess of oxygen right we get na2cro4 along with this we get fe2o3 and carbon dioxide interestingly uh, fe2o3 which is formed here it's water insoluble this is insoluble in water so this can be removed from here right now as soon as we get na2cro4 this na2cro4 we react with h2so4 that means it is acidified this is your sodium chromate you you can write the name also sodium chromate sodium chromate right it's a yellow color solid remember this it's a yellow color solid fine as soon as we acidify this we get na2cr2o7 na2cr2o7 this is your sodium dichromate sodium dichromate sodium dichromate and this is your yellow color solid right it is not uh, actually uh, obtained in solid form right but uh, what we do uh, we can crystallize this to separate but this na2cr2o7 which is formed will be of yellow color now this yellow color 
sodium dichromate when we treat with kcl we get k2cr2o7 right and along with this we get nsl so this reaction you have to remember k2cr2o7 plus nsl we get and this is less soluble right this is less soluble less soluble and can be easily obtained by cooling obtained by cooling this nsl which is formed here is more soluble so it can be easily removed it can be separated okay first you write this then once again i will repeat write down up to here then i will repeat once again see we take chromite ore chromite ore we fuse with na2co3 you can see here it is prepared from chromate which is obtained by fusion of chromite ore right here it should be chromite ore right fecr2o4 with the sodium carbonate in excess of air this is called sodium uh, fusion or fusion mixture also once we fuse this <coughs> in excess of oxygen we get sodium carb uh, this chromate and sodium chromate when we react with h2so4 it is acidified it converts into sodium dichromate and when we react with kcl it will react to give you k2cr2o7 plus nsl right when you balance the equation here it will be 4 mole here it will be 8 mole here also it will be 8 mole and here it will be 2 carbon dioxide Eight mole carbon dioxide will be prepared, right? So balancing you can do yourself; it's not an issue. I'm quite sure that you all know how to balance the equation, right? Is this clear? Now, interestingly, if you uh, see the structure of these two ore of chromium, uh, you know, like chromate and dichromate ions, right? Uh, they can exist in equilibrium. right if we change the ph its color will change all these points one by one we will cover after this so i hope uh, you all must have completed up to here see chromate ion if we draw chromate ion cro4 minus tetrahedral geometry this is your chromate ion if we draw the dichromate ion the structures are very very important beta very important this will remain as it is right uh, just a minute sorry here it should be here it should be minus right here it should be minus because it is cr o4 minus 2 cr o4 minus 2 this is your chromate ore when we talk about dichromate ore one oxygen this oxygen will form a bridge bond here like this and this will be your o minus so this is your dichromate ore or dichromate ion not ore dichromate ion the formula is cr2 o7 minus 2 okay and they are in equilibrium we will discuss later on that how a ph can change the color and how uh, because of ph things will change that we will discuss after this right sometimes uh, a student do ask that sir why we are using uh, k2cr2o7 in most of the titration why na2cr2o7 cannot be used right so in practical uh, we will see this that k2cr2o7 k2cr2o7 used as standard standard solution in titration right k2cr27 used as a standard solution in titration what is the meaning of a standard solution solution whose concentration is already known to us okay so it can be used as a standard solution but but na2cr2o7 sodium dichromate cannot be used cannot be used as a standard solution as a standard solution right 
as a standard solution because because it is hygroscopic in nature it is hygroscopic in nature hygro scopic hygroscopic in nature try to understand what is the meaning of hygroscopic nature right we we already know in 11th also we have done this suppose this is the test tube we have or a beaker and in this suppose we are taking na2cr27 as a standard solution right for the titration what it can do suppose initially if we take 100 ml of some liquid solution like it may be water right so if 100 ml we are taking as soon as this na2cr27 we add in this this na2cr27 will absorb some of the water molecule it's hygroscopic so it will absorb the water molecule right so may be possible that the initial volume we have taken 100 ml but due to absorption of water molecule by na2cr27 may be possible 96 or 95 ml water is only present during the titration so what will happen entire reading will be wrong because actual volume used there is 96 ml and we are calculating taking 100 ml as the initial volume right so that's the only reason why na2cr27 we are not using because it is hygroscopic it can easily absorb the water molecule is this clear i hope this point is clear to all children you can respond okay good now the next point we have chemical properties chemical properties of k2cr207 chemical properties of k2cr207 first action of heat jay student be very careful uh, action of heat that means we are talking about heating effect of salt or heating effect of some compound okay so here we have k2cr207 k2cr207 right when we heat k2cr207 we get k2 CrO4 plus Cr2O3 plus oxygen balancing you can do okay K2Cr2O7 if you see here what will be the oxidation state of chromium plus six and in this case what will be the oxidation state here it will be quickly tell me what will be the oxidation state plus six what about this what about this plus 3 yes or no so can you see that this k2cr207 from plus 6 it has given you two different oxidation state this cr203 what will be the color of cr203 anyone we have discussed yesterday uh, ja students Hey students. Everyone just mute yourself. Who is this? Children, can you mute yourself? Amit. Fine. So, okay. Fine. So, uh, quickly tell me, what is the color of Cr two O three? Anyone? Correct. Correct, Rachel. Correct. You can unmute and tell me the answer. Green. Okay. So this is the first uh, reaction we have. Heating effect. K two Cr two O seven. When we heat, we get K two Cr O four. Second, we have oxidizing nature. It is very very important. Oxidizing nature. oxidizing nature in acidic medium in acidic medium k2cr207 k2cr207 is a strong oxidizing agent is a strong oxidizing agent it's a strong oxidizing agent in k2cr207 
right? Always remember that it cannot act as an oxidizing agent in alkali metals, uh, sorry, this alkaline solution or in neutral medium. It always acts as an oxidizing agent in a strong acidic medium, right? Fine. Cr207 minus 2. Suppose if we are talking about K2Cr207 or Cr2O7 minus 2 in ionic form. In acidic medium, always it converts to Cr plus 3, right? So if you see here, if you see two chromium metal we have here, for each metal, the oxidation state change is from plus 6 to plus 3, right? So overall, if we calculate the N factor, it comes to 6. You can see here, change is plus 3. How many chromium we have? Two. So overall, change will be of 6. So N factor is always six. This we are going to use in balancing the oxidation state, uh, balancing the uh, redox reaction, right? For example, uh, you can write one example here. Suppose if I write that uh, dichromate ion Cr2O7 minus two changes Fe plus two to Fe plus three. Right, that means it oxidizes Fe plus two to Fe plus three. Right, you have to write the balanced chemical equation. So what we will do? It's very simple. Just everyone pay attention. I will give you time for writing. We have Fe plus two plus Cr two O seven minus two. In acidic medium, it is given so H plus ion, and this gives some product. The product is very uh, much understandable from here that Fe plus 2 will convert into Fe plus 3. And along with this Cr2O7 minus 2, we all know that in acidic medium, it will be giving you Cr plus 3, right? And if this side we have H plus, definitely some amount of water will be on the product side. Now to balance this equation, this trick you also remember. I'm writing something very, very important. Right? Because in board exam or in competitive exam, you will not have that much time to balance the step wise step. Simply what you can do, you see the oxidation state of each element, plus six, here we have plus three. If you calculate here, we have the change of plus three into two, that is six, right? This is nothing but your N factor. Similarly, if you see for this, the N factor we have only one. What you have supposed to do, you just cross multiply this coefficient in the reactant side. That means the value what you got here, you multiply it here. And the value which you got here, you multiply it to this ion. And after that, you write the reaction. So after doing this, we will be getting six mole of Fe plus two plus one mole of Cr2O7 minus two plus H plus, this gives Fe plus 3 plus Cr plus 3 plus water. Now, what you are supposed to do, you just balance the atom other than oxygen and hydrogen, exactly the same way what we have done in 11th class, right? So, what you will do? 6, here chromium we have 2, so this side also will have chromium 2. Now, the chromium and iron is balanced. Quickly, we can balance the water molecule. Now you can see that in the reactant side, in the reactant side, we have seven oxygen. So here we must multiply this water by seven. Now we have 14 H, 14 hydrogen. So we have to multiply here by 14, right? You can check because we have already multiplied the coefficient with N factor charge. Most of the cases, it will be balanced. You can see here 12 plus charge minus two and plus 14. So overall positive charge, if you calculate here, how much it will be? 24, right? 24 positive charge here. So in product side also, we should have 24. Six into three, 18, 18 plus six, 24. So this reaction is totally balanced. No need to remember the reaction, right? If you know exactly the behavior of K2Cr207, you will be easily able to do this. Right. I'm giving one more question here. I hope this point is clear to everyone. Okay. Once again, I can repeat. First of all, you have to write the reactant and product. Check for the oxidation state. Calculate the N factor of that and cross multiply this. Suppose N factor of 
ion if we are getting one multiply chromium product with one and if n factor of chromium product we are getting six multiply that by the other one and then balance atom other than oxygen and hydrogen first and then balance oxygen and hydrogen respectively right and then you check the charge without checking the charge uh, your answer is not complete you must uh, check it that whether the charge is same or not in both the sides right some more example quickly i will write here uh, you can go through this right and then i will give you a table where uh, each one of you can uh, you know understand that what all product we will get from chromium or when chromium act as a oxidizing agent this question you all can quickly balance i minus converted to i2 write the reactant and product quickly do this do it fast i hope all can do this right see we have i minus plus cr2 o7 minus 2 this will give you i2 plus cr plus 3 and then we will get water because it's in acidic medium here we must write h plus also right now to balance this chromium plus 6 chromium plus 3 again n factor we will be getting n factor is equal to 6 right the overall change we have 6 and here i minus to i 2 that means minus 1 to 0 again the n factor is 1 So cross multiply this six i minus plus cr two o seven minus two plus h plus gives i two plus cr plus three plus water. Now other than oxygen and hydrogen balance the atom. Here we have six iodine. Here we have two multiply by three. Chromium we have two multiply it by two. Done. Then we have oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen we have seven here. Multiply it by seven. Now, if fourteen H hydrogen we have this side, so fourteen H plus. Your reaction is balanced. Your reaction is balanced. This type of questions are frequently asked, beta. So this is very very important, right? This trick you also remember, right? There are a few more uh, important reactions uh, which you can remember. I am just writing the trend here, right? K two Cr two O seven. K two Cr two O seven. Which is orange color, orange color, right? When it is acidified, when it is acidified, one product is fixed that it will convert into Cr plus three, right? Cr plus three. Uh, if acidic medium, suppose if we are taking, you know, uh, H two S O four, if we are taking acidic medium, then it may give you some product like Cr two S O four whole thrice. Okay, in plus three only it will give the product, and uh, this compound is also important. Cr two SO four whole thrice. It's a green color compound. Chromium in plus three ion mostly it will be green, right? H two S. See how it converts different different uh, you know reaction or how it act as a oxidizing agent and reduce other compounds into simpler form. H two S will be converted to sulfur, right? SO two Will be converted to SO four minus two. It's an oxidizing agent. It will <clears throat> always act a, act a, as an oxidizing agent in acidic medium only. NO two minus will be converted to NO three minus. NO three minus. We have already seen that iodine will be uh, iodine ion will be converted to I two. Similarly, bromine. If we take Br minus. Br minus will be converted to Br two. Sn plus two will be converted to Sn four. Sn four, right? Suppose uh, we have SO three minus two. SO three minus two. Then this also will be converted to SO four minus two, right? Fe plus two. Already we have balanced the first equation. Fe plus two will be converted to Fe plus three. right this type of reaction right one very important one alcohol c2h5oh will be converted to 
CH3 COOH ethyl alcohol will be converted to acetic acid right application of this is sometimes asked that what is the application of uh, you know uh, C2H5OH right this reaction this reaction of C2H5OH with uh, K2Cr2O7 with you know reaction with alcohol what we are writing here C2H5OH is used for drunk and drive test is used for or used in drunk and drive test drunk and drive test you all must have seen that uh, i don't know how many of you have seen that but in movies you all must have seen uh, there is a small instrument which uh, they insert in mouth and they ask you to you know just uh, blow the ear usme bolta hai na just phook maro usme right so what happens uh, there are potassium dichromate solution and when someone who has already you know uh, drunk if they blow the ear what happens color will change right the orange color will slowly and slowly change if alcohol is present or you have drunk alcohol so this is very useful in uh, detecting that right that's why it is called that it is used in a drunk and drive test it's very important clear so these are certain important reaction apart from this two three more reactions we have which we will see and then we will conclude potassium dichromate uh, in details potassium dichromate and uh, potassium uh, permanganate we will see that because it it's some major topic we have and then the other reactions we will come across right i hope you all must have written this another which is practically very important chromyl chloride test chromyl chloride test chromyl chloride test right this we have to do in lab also right this is actually used for the detection of chlorine minus ion cl minus ion used for identification of identification of it is used for the identification of cl minus ion mostly in salt analysis we will be doing that okay see any you know salt having cl minus ion in aqueous solution right any solution you can take where cl minus ion we have it react with uh, cr2o7 acidified cr2o7 minus 2 uh, cr2o7 minus 2 in acidic medium suppose if it is h2so4 we are taking so this will give you a brown red vapors of chromyl chloride cro2 cl2 this is your chromyl chloride c h r o m y l chromyl chloride right this is your chromyl chloride gas and this is of brown red color brown red color in some textbook you may get to see it is written you know orange uh, color or orange red vapors but uh, brown or orange red vapors you will get here right orange red vapors we all know it can be of other gases also right brown vapors we know that no2 can produce brown vapors bromine uh, gas can also produce uh, reddish brown vapors right so to confirm this see this is the identification test we have done any solution having cl minus ion when react with uh, potassium dichromate in acidic medium it gives a reddish brown vapors now to confirm this confirmatory test is very very important right confirm this confirmation of this we have to do so how to confirm we take this gas and we pass this gas through naoh right this gas we pass through aqueous naoh what happens this convert into yellow color the reddish brown vapor which we are getting here that will be converted to yellow color due to formation of na2crO4 will get a yellow solution so this is the confirmation once again understand suppose here we have a test tube in this we have some solution containing cl minus ion to first of all to identify whether cl minus is there or not what we are doing k2cr2o7 and h2so4 is added here drop is drop 
we will get some brown vapors coming from this right now this brown vapors can be of any gas we don't know so we have to confirm this for confirmation this gas we have to pass through NaOH as soon as this gas is passed through NaOH what we will see that the brown vapors converted to yellow color right that's why this is very very important test for detection and confirmation of chloride ions that is called chloride chloride clear interesting fact most of the question which can be asked in competitive exam chlorides of lead mercury silver and tin sn right pb hg ag and sn these are the four example je student also should pay attention on this do not give this test do not give this test do not give this test the reason is as they are covalent as they are covalent in nature nature and do not give cl minus ion right the first step itself will be not prepared so it cannot be identified and if it cannot be identified bromide chloride gas will not be produced and if bromide chloride gas is not produced we cannot do this reaction for this chlorides lead chloride hgcl2 or hgcl agcl and then we have essential 2 and essential 4 do not give this test as they are covalent in nature and do not give and do not give cl minus ion in solution in solution clear so almost all the reactions we have done only one reaction important reaction is left we will be doing after this complete it fast do it fast everyone i hope you all must have completed we'll go ahead good see the next one the next point reaction with h2o2 reaction with h2o2 hydrogen peroxide it's very very important right k2cr2o7 when react with hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is also oxidizing agent but mild oxidizing agent so this gives rise to a very very important compound which is called chromium peroxide chromium peroxide formula is not that important the important question is this if you see the oxidation state it seems that chromium is having plus 10 oxidation state here but it's not like that when k2cr2o7 <coughs> react with h2o2 in acidic medium it gives chromium peroxide the color of this is deep blue it's a deep blue color right and when we see the structure of this it resemble the structure of butterfly it's a structure is somewhat like this okay and these are the peroxide bond peroxide linkage peroxy linkage we can call it peroxy linkage okay both this side also we have peroxy linkage this resemble the structure of butterfly so in general this structure is called blue butterfly and this uh, already taught to you in class you know 11th i hope this point is clear i hope this point is clear right now quickly we will summarize the reaction of k2cr2o7 quickly we will summarize this flow diagram which i am drawing for this particular compound you have to draw for other compound on your own see the way how we can easily you know remember all the points in just one slide fe cr2o4 when react with na2co3 in presence of oxygen it gives na2crO4 this when acidified h2so4 this gives na2cr2o7 right reaction with kcl reaction with kcl produce k2cr2o7 k2cr2o7 this is orange orange crystals right 
Now from here, if we hit this, all the reactions I'm completing in just one slide, K2CrO4, quick revision, Cr2O3 plus oxygen. This you have to remember that this is a green color solid. Green solid, okay? Now when this will be acidified in acidic medium, in acidic medium, right? In acidic medium, <coughs> acidic medium, it is a strong oxidizing agent where N factor we have calculated six, right? In presence of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide in acidic medium, it gives CrO5, right? Blue butterfly, blue butterfly, blue butterfly. One thing you all should remember from here that the oxidation state of this chromium is plus six due to peroxide linkage, is plus six, okay? This is blue butterfly structure. Next reaction, we have seen the chromyl chloride reaction, okay? When Cl minus ion from the solution is reacting with this, right, in presence of H2SO4, that is H plus ion, it gives CrO2Cl2. This is orange or brown gas, orange or brown red vapors, right? Brown red vapors. And when this react with aqueous NaOH, we get Na2CrO4 yellow solution, right? This is called your chromyl chloride test. This is your chromyl chloride test, right? Chromyl chloride test. Chromyl chloride test. So in one slide, entire potassium dichromate, you can understand. Make sure that here, which we have written in acidic medium, it acts as oxidizing agent. Few examples we all have written like H2S can be converted to sulfur. SO2 can be converted to SO4 minus two. NO2 minus will be converted to NO3 minus. SN plus two will be converted to SN plus four, et cetera. Why this is very, very important. Why this is very, very important. Uh, you will understand that these reactions, what we have written here, most of the cases, these reactions are even shown by KMNO4 also. Most of the reactions are exactly same, except few reactions, which we'll be discussing separately, right? One more topic, the last part, the last topic of this, uh, uh, you know, chromate dichromate, we will finish and then we will take a break. Chromate dichromate equilibrium. Sir, we were writing it, people. Sir, I were... Yes, sir. Huh. Completed fast. This flow diagram or this type of flow diagram, uh, entire uh, you know chapter we have to follow. Then only reaction you can easily understand. Fe two, uh, FeCrO four, Cr two O four. When react with Na two CO three in presence of oxygen, first of all we get Na two CrO four acidified. We will get Na two Cr two O seven, right? Simply, you can understand uh, one thing very, very important that in both the cases, oxidation state is not changing. Here also we have plus six, here also we have plus six oxidation state, right? But only difference is what? Chromate is changed to dichromate. This is chromate dichromate change we have. Chromate is changed to dichromate. Once you complete, just you can uh, let me know. I hope you all must have completed. Done, Rachit? Yes, sir. Other can also respond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. We'll go ahead. Yes, sir. Beautiful. See, the next uh, what we have, the next we have chromate dichromate equilibrium. Chromate dichromate. Chromate dichromate. Equilibrium. It's very simple, but it is very, very important for your exams. This is the chromate ion we have, CrO4 minus two. Equilibrium sign you can draw here. It is acid in acidic medium, and this is in basic medium. We get 
सी आर डबल बॉन्ड ओ ओ माइनस डबल बॉन्ड ओ ऑक्सीजन बॉन्डेड विथ अगेन क्रोमियम राइट एंड ओ माइनस लाइक दिस दिस इज ऑरेंज कलर सर बेसिक कैंसर वॉट हैपन नो नो बेसिक इट्स बेसिक इट्स नॉट कैंसल लेट मी राइट वन सेकेंड it's basic okay here we have minus sign here also we have minus sign okay this is orange color this is yellow color now see what happens actually there is a equilibrium which exists at equilibrium exists at ph of 4 ph is equal to 4 it's very very important to note that at ph is equal to 4 there is a equilibrium right so what happens whenever you know in acidic medium yellow chromate ion is converted into green that means if ph is coming below 4 right i can write here if ph is less than 4 that means if we are you know acidifying this color of solution will be orange because in acidic medium chromate will change into dichromate and if we add some basic medium right basic solution in this that means when ph will exit now don't compare with neutral ph 7 for this neutral ph will be 4 because they exist in equilibrium at ph is equal to 4 so below 4 color of solution will be orange and above ph 4 color of solution is color of solution will be yellow color this is very very important for your exam very important right clear that means in acidic medium the yellow chromate ion this yellow chromate ion yellow chromate ion will change into orange color dichromate ion clear and that's why uh, in acidic medium color is changing i hope this points are clear to everyone hope these points are clear done we will go ahead so this is all about we have for this potassium dichromates now we are starting with potassium permanganate potassium permanganate potassium permanganate kmno4 potassium permanganate kmno4 first preparation preparation this is actually prepared from pyrolocytol from pyrolocyte o mno2 mno2 see what we do step by step this you need to understand we take mno2 and we fuse this fused with potassium hydroxide in presence of kno3 now first you understand one point here with which is very important hidden point here actually we all know that kno3 hno3 kno3 they can act as a oxidizing agent they can act as a oxidizing agent so in actual what happens we all know that uh, when we fuse this fusion means we, at a high temperature we are using this so at high temperature kno3 is actually breaking into kno2 on fusion and produce oxygen this oxygen is actually responsible for oxidizing uh, you know to behave this as a oxidizing agent remember this when we fuse this kno3 here it is breaking into because we all know that uh, sodium nitrate or uh, potassium nitrate right cesium nitrate rubidium nitrate or any salt of sodium potassium rubidium cesium they are thermally very very stable so at low temperature they are not going to change but when we fuse them at very high temperature they will convert into like if we are taking nitrate nitrate will be converted to nitrite isn't it 
isn't it so this nitrate potassium nitrate when we heat at a high temperature when we fuse it converts into potassium nitrite plus oxygen gas and this oxygen gas is actually playing role so that this kno3 will act as a oxidizing agent here right oxidizing agent so what happens we take pyrolusite o with koh plus oxygen oxygen we are getting from kno3 and when we fuse this fusion we get k2mno4 plus mno2 along with water along with water this k2mno4 just i have written with green this is of green color green potassium manganate this is your potassium manganate potassium man manganate clear it can be written as mno4 minus 2 in the ionic form this is of green color now this mno4 minus 2 this can be converted into mno4 minus by acidification see till here you should learn that how this point or how this step we have achieved there are many ways or actually there are two ways how we can convert mno4 minus 2 to mno4 minus so you can write here mno4 minus 2 ion is converted is converted is converted into mno4 minus ion by now you can write a or first point first is acidification first is acidification now in acidification what we do we take mno4 minus 2 plus acidic medium this gives mno4 minus plus mno2 plus water when you balance the reaction it will be 2 mole of this 4 mole of h plus 2 mole of mno4 minus right and 2 mole of water interestingly interestingly if you see here if you see here manganese here is in plus 6 oxidation state here we have plus 7 and here we have plus 4 from plus 6 to plus 7 and plus 4 this reaction is a example the best example we have for disproportionation reaction this is a very good example we have for disproportionation reaction right this is a very very good example of disproportionation reaction i don't have a space here to write so you can write this product which we got that mno4 minus which we got by acidification is not having very good yield it has a very poor yield it has very poor yield so it cannot be used commercially right it cannot be used commercially i don't have a space you can write here it cannot be used commercially so we must understand how commercially it can be prepared i will be writing just after this in the next slide first of all you just copy up to here right i can quickly once again tell you see what we do we take pyrolusite ore we fuse with koh and kno3 the importance of kno3 here is to provide oxygen that's why it is used as a oxidizing agent here when we fuse pyrolusite ore with potassium hydroxide in presence of oxygen we get potassium manganate k2mno4 here manganese is in plus 6 oxidation state that is very very important plus mno2 plus water now this plus 6 oxidation state k2mno4 we have to convert into kmno4 right so for that there are two ways the first we have acidification that permanganate ion can be sorry magnet ion can be converted to permanganate ion this is the reaction which is very very important because it's a disproportionation reaction at the same time the yield of this product is very poor so it cannot be used commercially commercially how we can convert this so the next point you can write commercially commercially it is obtained by obtained by 
इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक रिडक्शन इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक सॉरी इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक ऑक्सीडेशन नॉट रिडक्शन इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक ऑक्सीडेशन वॉट वी डू वी गॉट एम एन ओ टू फ्यूजन मिक्सचर वी हैव के ओ एच प्लस ऑक्सीजन वी गेट एम एन ओ फोर माइनस दिस स्टेप टिल हियर एवरीथिंग इज सेम राइट दिस के ओ एच और ओ टू यू कैन राइट और इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन राइट के ओ एच प्लस के एन ओ थ्री फ्यूज बोथ यू कैन राइट वी गेट एम एन ओ फोर माइनस टू दैट इज मैंगनेट आय ग्रीन कलर मैंगनेट आय ग्रीन कलर मैंगनेट आय ग्रीन कलर मैंगनेट आय वेन इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक ऑक्सीडेशन वी डू इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक ऑक्सीडेशन वेन वी डू वी ऑल नो ऑक्सीडेशन कैन टेक प्लेस एट एनोड so at anode we get a purple color purple color permanganate ion it's a purple color magnet ion actually at anode this we get reaction happens somewhat like this at anode mno4 minus 2 gives mno4 minus plus electron one electron is removed so this is the best way to prepare commercially the permanganate ion permanganate ion is purple color right up to this you just complete it then we will discuss something very important based on their structure and color after that i will give you the break don't worry uh, it i will take another 4 to 5 minutes then we will have a break sir uh, uh, what is written here where beta electro okay here fused this is fused right koh when we fuse with kno3 it's fused to give you a green magnet ion mno4 minus 2 plus 6 oxidation state when we uh, electro when it pass through electrolytic oxidation at anode mno4 minus 2 will give you mno4 minus and one electron is released i hope this point is clear shall we go ahead now a very th important theoretical question which is asked uh, from here that is based on the structure of these two ions see when we talk about mn o4 minus 2 sorry mn o4 minus 2 mn o4 minus 2 we will get some structure somewhat like this right this is tetrahedral sometime uh, hybridization geometry can also be asked in board exam simple question green color color is very very important color you all should remember you can see in this uh, structure we have manganese in plus 6 oxidation state in general manganese when we write the electronic configuration we have 3d4 uh, 3d5 4s2 if manganese is in plus 6 oxidation state the electronic configuration will be 3d1 so if 3d1 that means one unpaired electron we have one unpaired electron one unpaired electron so it will be what paramagnetic it will be paramagnetic so it can show what if it is paramagnetic and if it has one unpaired electron it can show dd transition this one unpaired electron can jump from one d orbital to other d orbital i have already shown you the splitting of orbital in the previous slides right so here because of one unpaired electron it can show dd transition so it will be colored you can understand the importance of this topic that here the color of potassium permang uh, this uh, a uh, magnet ion potassium magnet ion or simply magnet ion is not because of charge transfer it is because of dd transition there is one unpaired electron it can show dd transition but when we talk about mn o4 minus 1 mn o4 minus 1 in this case if you see again this will be tetrahedral 
tetrahedral color is purple we all know that the color is purple but here manganese is in plus 7 oxidation state we have 3d0 4s0 3d0 4s0 it is diamagnetic there is no unpaired electron it is diamagnetic cannot show dd transition cannot show dd transition cannot show dd transition but colored it is colored compound it cannot show dd transition still it is colored due to charge transfer due to charge transfer due to charge transfer it is colored what is the meaning of tra charge transfer already i have discussed in one lecture but still i can tell you see if we see this oxygen right this oxygen here because manganese is in plus 7 oxidation state here we have 6 so this point is clear i think right now when we talk about manganese in plus 7 oxidation state there will be no electron in 3d and 4s right so what happened momentarily this electron will be given to this momentarily and during this transfer of electron the charge transfer right there will be some energy absorbed in the visible range and because of that it will show the color complementary color if you want you can write here this statement an electron is momentarily an electron is momentarily <coughs> an electron is momentarily transferred from transferred from transferred from oxygen to oxygen to manganese as a result as a result of which as a result of which it so it shows purple color it shows purple color right momentarily a electron will be transferred you can understand the reason also that oxygen being very highly electronegative here right and uh, oxygen you can see that uh, sorry manganese you can see that there is a huge electron deficiency right oxygen is having very huge electron deficiency there manganese not oxygen manganese this oxygen will transfer one electron momentarily to this and as soon as it will transfer the electron what will happen some charge transfer takes place because of which it can show color that's all about we have the structure after this we have physical and chemical properties of potassium permanganate that will be starting sharp at 1020 you can take 5 minutes break i hope you all must have written this all written good <clears throat>